So we're going to install the app so it's available within all of our sites in our school intranet and within OneDrive for Business. We're going to do this from the SharePoint admin console and we're going to install it into an app catalog. Now the app catalog is a, a place where within the SharePoint environment we can install applications for our whole school. We can install custom applications so that they're available for all our school sites. And we're going to do this for the OneNote class notebook for teachers so that it's available for all our classes. We'll go into the apps area of the SharePoint admin console and I'll launch the app catalog. Now I've already created an app catalog site but you'll be guided through this process if you do this for the first time. And there's a resource within my slides to show you how to create an app catalog. So the app catalog is just a site and I'm going to install the OneNote class notebook creator within the site contents. I'll add an app and I'll go to the SharePoint store. And because the app is quite popular, it will be available and promoted. There we go. Most relevant, it's um, right there at the top of the table, but if it's not visible there, you can use the search box. Just type in OneNote and you'll get the relevant applications or apps that you can install. We'll just launch it from here. And we get a good description about that, but we'll talk about that a little later. Let's add the app. Now the app needs a Microsoft account to be installed from the SharePoint store. I'm using Windows 8 and I've associated my Microsoft account with Windows 8, so it's logged me in automatically. You may get a prompt there to log in with the Microsoft account. I'm going to install it now and add this to the app catalog and it will return to the site. At this point I need to trust the app so that it can be used in my environment. And now that it's added, it's, it's installing in my SharePoint environment and it's going to be available for the other sites. While I'm here in the app catalog, there's one further thing I'm going to do to make this app available across all my sites. I'm going to change the deployment settings on the app here in the app catalog. And what I'll be able to do is adjust which sites it gets pushed out to. So go into the deployment area. There's a couple of options that I'll show you. One option is that we can choose to push it out to all sites. That's the one that I'm going to save for this presentation. But another option is I can, if I've got specific class sites and templates, what I can do is associate the app with just those templates. So if we go down here and imagine that the team site is a class site template, I can deploy it to just that team site template. And whenever that's deployed, then it will receive the OneNote class notebook creator app. I'll just remove it for now for this presentation and we'll save the setting. And I need to trust the app again because I'm doing it on behalf of all the sites that I'm deploying it to. And that is done. So now just to demonstrate, I'm going to go over to uh, the science department and I'm going to create a new class site. We'll go into site contents and what you'll see there now already is that the app has been pushed out to the science department. I'll create a new class site. Year 9 science. Deploy a team site. And once the site's created, we'll go to site contents and you'll see the app available there for a teacher to simply run and start creating a notebook. So now we have the site, brand new site for year 9 science. We'll go to site contents and the app will be available there to run the application and start creating a notebook for the class. Now we're visiting an existing class site where we're going to run the OneNote class notebook creator. Now the thing that we've just done with the app catalog is we've made the app available in this site. So it's going to be very easy for a teacher to find the app, 
run it and create their notebooks. They don't have to go to the SharePoint store, they don't have to install an app themselves. It's all been done by their Office 365 global admin. So let's do that now. We'll run the app and we'll begin to create our notebooks. So now I've got three things that I can do with the class notebook creator. I'm going to create a class notebook. After I've done that I could add additional students and I could view existing notebooks. I'll create my class notebook for year 10 science. It'll create three sections that we'll discuss later. The first section is the collaboration space where teachers and students can contribute to that space. This could be used for group work, it could be used to get feedback from students and to get some ideas and brainstorm together. The second section is the content library where a teacher might publish content but not want students to interact or to add to that content. However, students could take some of that content and put it into their own notebooks. And then there's the students notebooks which is a notebook in a sense within a notebook where students will have their own space, teachers and a student can interact with it, but other students cannot see each other's notebooks. We'll add a couple of students now. We'll add Jack, and this is searching for Jack from our SharePoint users. And we'll add Elizabeth Swan. So if we needed to add a, a lot of students in one go, we could use a list of students and separate them using semicolons. I'll just use these two students for now. We've given an opportunity to select four of the default sections and we can add more and I'll just stick with the defaults for now. We get a preview now of what the notebook looks like. So this is a teacher's view and the teacher can see both Jack and Elizabeth's sections and when we look at the student's view of these notebooks, you'll see Jack can only see his own section and perhaps what his sections will be within his notebook. We'll create the notebook now and we get a bit of feedback about what's happening during this process, creating different notebooks and groups of notebooks. It will also go ahead and create permissions. So this is one important thing about this tool. We use the tool to manage and create the permissions for the notebook. So there we have it, we've got a notebook created. We're given a, a link that we can copy and send to students to share. This part of the link where it says note OneNote at the beginning means that it will launch the OneNote application on your device and it will guide you through to open the notebook there. We can also click this link at the top, so I'll do this now and we'll allow that to happen and very shortly it will open up the notebook and populate it with the sections and also the students notebooks as I'm logged in as the teacher. So there we can see the different sections that are in the notebook. See the collaboration space and the content library and of course Elizabeth and Jack, their different sections. So we'll have a look at these sections a little later on and how we can use them for the different situations. But one thing I want to point out now is we have a notebook. We can use it, we can connect to it via that page. So being the teacher that I've just run the tool, I can do that. But how do I um, share this now easily with my students? So we'll go back to our class site now. We'll go back uh, using the tool. Now, within uh, SharePoint Online, we've got a section called Recent, which shows an app or a library that has been created within our, within our site recently. This tool that we've run, the OneNote Class Notebook Creator, has created a document library called the EDU OneNote App Documents. And we can also see that the OneNote Class Notebook Creator has been added to the Recent list. To make this easier for our students to find it, some of the items here in the recent, recently run or recently created content will disappear eventually. So we need to move this document library to somewhere that it will be constantly there and available to work with. We also want to name it so that it's something a little more friendly. So we'll open up the library and we'll go into our library settings in SharePoint Online. We'll go to our library tab. 
just before I go on from there, you can see that as the teacher, I've created a notebook, and this has also created the folder to keep all my notebook and courses together. I'll now go to the library tab, and I'm going to rename the library. This doesn't change the link to the library, so that won't break uh, the access to the library, but it will make it a bit easier to read, a bit easier to find. We'll call this class notebooks. And we'll choose to add this to the quick launch. This means that it will be available on the quick launch or the current navigation in our site. We'll now go back to our site. And we've got it added now to the quick launch. We could move that link up a little so that it's easier to find. And save that. So maybe our class is only going to have one notebook and we want to just make that very easy to find. We'll go into our class notebooks and we can grab the link to that notebook by launching the notebook in OneNote Online. So here's our notebook. We'll open it in OneNote Online and we'll grab the address from our address bar at the top of the screen. We'll copy in that in. We'll go back to our class Now we can create another link in our menu to make it easy for us to simply launch the notebook. Add a link. Year 10 Science. Paste that in. Drag that up so that it's a sub item. And save it. Now I've still got that link in my clipboard for Windows. I'm also going to edit the page and make this OneNote picture or icon linked so that someone may want to launch the notebook from here by clicking on the picture. And we don't need to display any text but we'll add in the address. And I'll save the page. And now let's see how that performs. So we'll launch that, there we go, easy to find. So now all our students need to do is visit our class site and launch the notebook from there. So let's have a look at what Jack's experience will be of that. So how does Jack access the notebook? Well, now all he needs to do is visit the site from his device and either click on the OneNote picture where I've linked the notebook or you can go to class notebooks and launch the year 10 science notebook. So Jack will launch it within OneNote Online. And then of course within OneNote Online he has the option to open in OneNote. So you can see Jack's sections here. And Jack can open in OneNote and it will open using OneNote on his desktop or the app, the appropriate app that's available. Now if we go up we can see Jack has access to the collaboration space, the content library and his own section.